And now we're going to uh, go to another expert speaker on the new business uh, acquisition. Jody Sutter is going to be talking to us about how to new, re renew business by playing to our strengths. Over to you, Jody. Oh, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, it's um, first of all, it's a real pleasure to be in the company of the the folks who are are doing this panel. I loved what Marcel said uh, about how um, you know, low delivery like new business can't be a solution to a low delivery problem. I'm, I would be the first to agree to that. I think also that what Jason was focusing on is really a, the the situation that almost every agency owner is going to be in is that need to win over a client and handle those common objections. So I am, but I, like I said, I'm going to um, switch gears a little bit and talk to you about um, your strengths and sort of a more of it, maybe a sort of a softer approach to business development or some of the softer skills, more of a psychological approach, but just as important, I think, as some of the, um, uh, some of the other harder sell tactics. Okay, so just again, quickly about me. I work with the owners of small marketing agencies on mindset tools and routines necessary to sustainably, uh, to, to grow a sustainable new business operation. I am a career business development professional. It's what I know, it's what I love. And um, what I, one of the, one of my approaches also is to not only offer my clients um, the best advice that I can based on my experience and my know-how, but to really dig deep and try to understand some of the reasons why my clients, why agency owners tend to do or not do the stuff that's going to win them business. So one of the things that you can think about as I go through my quick 15 minutes, maybe I'm down to about 13 now, um, I'm curious about knowing whether you've, you've finished your plan for new business growth in 2023. I wonder maybe if you've even started it. Hopefully you have. Hopefully most of you have finished it. But what I find is that um, what I find is that this time of year we're creating big plans, and we spend a lot of time on uh, a lot of time on it. We might go in and do a lot of analysis on the numbers. Someone like Marcel would help us do that. We might decide to go out there and prospect in a big way and learn how to close more business. Or someone like Jason could help you do that. We do this really great big plan, and then it sits on a shelf and we don't do anything with it. Or maybe we go into the new year with a lot of big intentions. But often what I find is that by the end of the year, the agency owners that I work with are saying, we did this great plan and we didn't do anything. And so I wanna know why does this hold, what, what holds agency owners back from doing what they know is the best step forward to winning new business. And I think it actually has less to do with some of the more, uh, common reasons like I don't have time or uh, the economic forces works against us or, or we just so busy with client work. I think that there's some real psychological reasons. And here's what they are. Number one, rejection sucks. When I work with my clients, I want to make sure that we are minimizing the amount of time that they are going out into the world to prospect and win over so that when, and, that, and, that, and we want to maximize the amount of pre-qualified prospects are coming their way. So the close time is short, but new business, ultimately, I haven't figured out how not to make it a numbers game. So you're going to be rejected more than you are, are accepted. People are going to say no more than going to say yes. And that's not always pleasant. I also find that agency owners have a big question. Where do I start? Uh, there's a lot I could be doing to promote my agency. There's a lot I could be doing to get out and market myself and to and pitch myself to prospects we want to work with. Where do I start? And then not only that, going back to that plan that's sitting on the shelf, how do I keep going? How do I know that three months in, I am going to have the momentum I need to continue to execute this plan? And what's really going to pay off? I talked to a lot of agency owners who said, yeah, you know, we tried content marketing or we tried third party uh, lead generation. It just didn't work. We invested a, invested a lot of money and a lot of time. So we are hesitant to do the same thing again if we don't know if it's going to pay off. And finally, I just can't relate it to my own talents. That's the, the words coming from the mouth of an agency owner. This feels, I know this is the right thing to do, and yet it feels so foreign. It feels uncomfortable to get out there and sell, and so I will avoid it. The thing is that we only see results through our actions, and so when I work with agency owners, I what, one of my big roles is to help them take action. And one of the ways I think we can do that is by knowing our strengths and then playing to our strengths. 
I also want to invite you, if um, if you are curious, I do have a, uh, a quiz online that will help you understand which of one of four new business strengths personalities you might be as an agency owner or an agency empl uh, employee. But we're going to go through, I'm going to introduce you to those four, um, those four profiles right now. And you can probably figure out also, but you're, I would love for you to take the quiz if you're curious, if you're curious about um, where you lie on this in this matrix. All right. The first new business personality, they're the hunters. And as you might guess, the hunters tend to be the naturally, the people who are naturally good at selling. They seem to have an instinct for selling. They are energized by connecting with others. They're the type of person who can walk into a network networking room, walk into a cocktail party filled with prospects or business associates and, uh, and not feel uncomfortable <laughs> walking up to a total stranger and having a conversation. Or I also talk about this person as being the type of person who walks on a plane, walks into business class uh, in JFK and walks off that plane six hours later in LA, not only with a business card, but a business opportunity from the random person they just happen to be sitting next with. That's, to be honest, I'm a career business development professional. I am not necessarily a hunter. I'm really good at finding and winning new business, not a hunter. So not all of you are like this. Um, they also tend to be in each one of these profiles, by the way, they also have some drawbacks too. So if you're an agency owner saying, oh, I wish I felt more comfortable. I wish I felt like a hunter and was and found it easy to go out and talk to people and, and, and develop prospects. Um, hunters also have some drawbacks. And one of them is that they, um, they can be, they can overcompensate as fanatics for customer satisfaction. And that often drives their team nuts because they will spend probably sometimes a disproportionate amount of time on a prospect when probably they should just let it go and move on to the next one. Okay, so those are the hunters. The next ones are the promoters. And it's the only one where I have had an actual real person as my avatar. And that's Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm gonna assume that everyone knows who that is. So promoters are big personalities. They got big personal brands. They enjoy being the center of attention. They've got something to say. They're not afraid to say it. And not only are they not afraid to say it, they are compelled to get their message out. But interestingly enough, they're not always that eloquent. I don't know if any of you have sat through a Gary Vaynerchuk keynote, but gosh, he is so he's enthusiastic and energetic and generous with his information and knowledgeable. Um, but he's not necessarily eloquent. And I better be sitting next to me. He might actually be the first one to agree with that. However, he has no problem getting out on that stage and sharing his knowledge. The other thing about promoters is that business bleeds into their personal life and, and vice versa. So again, this is not for everyone. If this is someone that describes you, what I would say is to start to think, figure out ways to harness that energy. Okay, the third one, thinkers. I find a lot of agency owners are like this, thinkers, uh, especially if you are a, a creative director who decided to start your own small agency. They are the introverts. Uh, thinkers, though, are also often very good at making complex ideas easy to understand. That is so valuable when it comes to agency business development because what you sell, whether you like it or not, is complex and abstract. They tend to have the patience for details. Sales, a lot of sales is about the, the detail, the underlying details about the people you're talking to and the conversations that you're having and the bill and, the, and that sort of data bank, data bank of knowledge that you're building on each prospect. Thinkers also, while they may be a little quieter and while they may not be great walking into that big room filled with people, drinking cocktails, they also tend to be strong interpersonal. Um, they have strong interpersonal skills. So they're much better uh, with a one-on-one -on -one type of situation. And a lot of sales is a one-on-one -on -one type of situations. Uh, but the thing about thinkers is they also really need a clarity of purpose. They need to be, because they do not necessarily love going out and exposing themselves, they really need to have a sense of a uh, real reason for why they're walking up to someone and having a conversation about their agency. This is They are the, they are the ones where a very strong, clearly articulated positioning is going to make a huge difference. And then finally, we have the communicators. These are the big picture people, like the uh, like the the introvert or like the the thinkers. They also are very good at taking complex ideas and making them easy to understand, but through a different type of forum, like a TED Talk. They captivate a crowd. 
They are the per people who are perennially on the pitch team. I've got a lot of experience with big, big agencies. We had, I had hundreds of people at my disposal to bring onto a pitch team. We always went back to the same top 5% because they were such good communicators. I'm not necessarily recommending that as an approach. We probably over relied on them, but they're the ones you always want in a room with, with lots of people. They don't always have the patience for uh, nurturing relationships, however. They like to go out, they like to express their ideas, and then they like to walk off stage. So if you are an agency that's run by a communicator, or you work with a communicator, you need to know you got to supplement that weakness. Maximize the strength, play to the strength, supplement the weakness. Okay, so these are the four profiles. You may be starting to find where you fit. If you're a hunter, what you want to do is you want to give yourself the structure to work your network. So this is going to be the most sort of classically, it's going to be closest to sort of a classic outbound prospecting uh, structure. Work your network, nurture relationships, close deals, and have people support you in other ways. You're not going to be the ones writing, the one writing the blog post or creating the expert content. If that's important, find someone else to help you do that while you are out there um, creating relationships and closing deals. If you are a promoter, uh, I would recommend having the brand built around you. For some agency owners, this makes them feel really uncomfortable. Uh, but look at Gary Vaynerchuk again as an example. The brand, the agency is built around him. Although as he has, as the agency has grown, you've also noticed that he and his management team have also done a pretty good job of allowing that agency to grow into this enormous successful company that while it's reliant on Gary's name is also independent of it. So it can be done. But if you're starting out, take advantage of your strength and think about building the brand around you. Provide, get yourself outlets to express yourself and then get the support you need to field and follow through on the leads that are gonna come your way because of your activity out in the marketplace. If you're a thinker, you're probably going to be better with expert content and that expert content might be things like books or white papers or other forms of creative expression. And you might be saying, well, it takes a really long time to see uh, results from a book. A book takes months to write, then I got to distribute it and promote it. It absolutely does. But if what you're doing now is not working, ask yourself, is it going to be working nine months from now? Or does it make more sense to invest some time in writing that piece of expert content so that you can get it out in the world and start to attract your ideal client? Um, again, like I said, think thinkers are also the ones who positioning are going to be having a really strong positioning statement is really going to help. They're going to be feel much more confident and secure in those situations than when they're given purpose. And finally, the communicators, these, uh, you want to get them out there on the speaking circuit. You want to get them out there as thought leaders, and you want to think about potentially backing them up with publicity and PR. So, those are the four uh, the four profiles and a very some really top line strategies on how to make the most of it. Um, and of course, if you'd like to take the quiz, uh, I look forward to seeing what your profiles are. The results will get back to me too. And um, as you go into 2023, think about how your strengths are going to help shape your plan. Jody, thank you so much. I know I promised no Q and A to anybody, but I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you talked about. Uh, four profiles, the hunters, promoters, thinkers, and communicators. Which one are you? Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting. For a long time, I thought I was a hunter. And uh, mm -hmm. I think also sometimes we change as we, as our careers progress and as we quite frankly get older. Uh, I am, I think I am a thinker. I'm a communicator thinker. I like, this is, and I'm doing so, right now. So we can't be crossbreeds then. I think totally. Look, this is a very unscientific uh, <laughs> uh, survey and it's like that scientific process. But yeah, I think you can totally be a little bit of both. But, you know, I'm here today because I know that I, uh, I'm i much better in this type of situation than mm -hmm. if I were to sit down for an hour making calls to a list of prospects. So, yeah, I Beautiful. try to live what I what I preach. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being with <laughs> Thank us. You.